Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to the Welcome to We Show. I'm one of your hosts here at the Welcome to We Show, and we have an incredible show planned for you tonight. It's an incredible panel of wonderful people who are living their purpose and being a voice for our planet. Um, please share this out. Please share this to your timeline. Please share this to your groups. Share it to any pages that you manage and let's get this message out there so that everyone can feel what the question that we answer what can we do together that we can't do on our own i have the privilege of co-hosting this show with the amazing rick alfick he's the founder of we the world which is we.net at the we campaign a global platform to unite and amplify the efforts of people, organizations, and movements working for the common good. Rick is the co-creator of 11 Days of Global Unity, which is linking local awareness and action campaigns into an inspiring international movement with participants including Desmond Tutu, Eve Ensler, Bill McKibben, and many, Marianne Williamson, and many, many more. Welcome, Rick. Hi, Karen. It's always great to be co-hosting broadcasts with you. And I just want to mention, uh, Karen, that we have Dave, I think, who, uh, if you can make him a panelist as well. So we're very excited to have him part of our panel today. And um, meanwhile, while while Karen is doing some of those things behind the scenes, uh, let me tell you about her. <clears throat> Karen Palmer is a mom who made a wish that sparked a kindness revolution. She is a global kindness leader and educator, and Karen is a live stream and social media expert who designs musical coloring books and toys to help co-create a kinder world. She is a best-selling author and co-produces several popular online talk shows and radio shows. She helps change agents and peacemakers find their voice and share their message and gifts globally. She is also leading the women's campaign for We the World, and she is a recording artist of conscious music. You can reach her through globalkindnesstv.org. And I thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we had some, uh, we had a surprise from Facebook, unfortunately, that we could not utilize Facebook to do this live, uh, live broadcast. Uh, and we found that out a little bit recently. So we are doing the best we can here. And um, we have an excellent show for you. And I'm going to introduce our first guest. And she is Sue Blythe. Sue Blythe is grandmother of eight, doing what she can to create a sustainable, just, and peaceful future for their grandchildren. And as coordinator of We The World's Campaign for Environment and co-founder of the Florida chapter of Elders Climate Action, Sue is pleased to bring the Climate Collaboratory to the University of Florida for development. Welcome to the Welcome to We Show, Sue Blythe. And I also want to express some appreciation from all of us because you helped to create the whole idea of the Welcome to We show. And now you are co-producing it along with Karen and myself. So thank you, Sue, and take it away. Thank you so much, Rick and Karen. And I'd like to uh, welcome our friends, Lynn Cherry from uh, Young Voices for the Planet. And also, there he is, uh, David, who is here from uh, uh, Pacha's Pajamas and his friend Ala, who is an animator for Pacha's Pajamas. And we're just so happy to have them here. And we'll be hearing from each of them a little bit later. 
So I wanted to explain about what this climate collaboratory is. Uh, as Rick mentioned, we started the uh, Welcome to We show about a year ago now, and it has been uh, growing closer and closer to what I have imagined <laughs> as a, um, <clears throat> a, a collaborative storytelling adventure that takes us uh, with this character that uh, David and, and Allah have created and uh, take her into the, what we are now calling the gardens of global unity. And so this, uh, I hope before too long, you'll be able to see it when we talk about it like this, but for tonight, uh, you'll just get the audio part. So as we go into the Gardens of Global Unity, which are based on the 11 days of global unity that happens every year in September, we just uh, celebrated the 15th anniversary. Rick started that uh, program 15 years ago, and my goodness, has it grown and really attracted uh, some wonderful people. And, and I'm sure we can talk a little more about that later. But as we go into these gardens, imaginary gardens, um, we're going to pass through the uh, gardens of unity and interdependence. And there are 11 in all, including the last one is peace because the 11 days of global unity end on the international day of peace every year. This year, the theme for the international day of peace was Climate Action for Peace. And so what we've done is named the whole year, 2019 and 20, uh, as Climate Action for Peace in the Gardens of Global Unity. So here we come into the Garden of Environment. And that's where we have this imaginary climate collaboratory. And so I'm trying to make it real by inviting people in to play. And here come three people that have uh, agreed to uh, help us with this. And so I would uh, like to just tell a little bit about how we're going to do that and then let them explain uh, who they are and what they bring to this climate collaboratory. So, we are uh, looking at the future as something that we can shape and create and make into something wonderful if we can all pull together and work in unity. Um, and I want to create a way of helping children, especially children and youth, to understand that we do have the opportunity to make huge and wonderful changes in their lifetime and hopefully very quickly. And so the goal is to uh, envision what it would take for us to be able, when we get to the year 2050, to say the closing words of the Earth Charter, which was launched uh, in the year 2000. And it says, let ours be a time remembered for the awakening of a new reverence for life, the firm resolve to achieve sustainability, the quickening of the struggle for justice and peace, and the joyful celebration of life. So here we go, we're on the road to uh, 2050. And when I, we get there, I'm gonna be 103 by golly. And uh, I have I recently remembered that when I was a kid, I used to sing along with Jiminy Cricket. I'm no fool, no siree. I'm going to live to be 103. And so here I'm making that my story. How about that? So we're going to get to 2050 and be able to look back on this time. Uh, we will be able at that time to tell how it is that the uh, children and youth of the world helped to accomplish all of the global goals uh, by playing some serious and playful sustainable world games. And so we're playing for uh, these 17 global goals to make a world that works for all. We're going to balance our climate 
make the world safe for li life on land and life underwater. And we're going to create peace on and with the earth. So we'll have to work day by day, year by year to see how we do that. So right now we're on the road to 2020 because uh, next year we have some very significant anniversaries. Uh, the first one will be Earth Day's 50th anniversary in April. We're also celebrating Earth Charter's 20th anniversary in June and the United Nations will be 75 years old in, in uh, October. And so we have some celebrating to do. We're asking people to think about action plans that they can make uh, now so that we can celebrate in a wonderful way uh, in, in the year 2020. So that's basically what this collaboratory is about is we're finding people who can help us to um, create these action plans and do some wonderful things. So I figured we've got lots of people who are already doing wonderful things. And so let's get them together and see what we can do. On the Welcome to We Show, we ask, what can we do together that we can't do on our own? Here comes Jennison. And so, um, yeah, so we're, we're looking at uh, making some action plans together and I'd like to uh, welcome our guests. We're glad that Jennison came in right in time. <laughs> I know you're at a uh, conference and, and so we thank you for taking time to join us. Um, but I'd like to start with you, Jennison, because um, I know that the program that you work with in Florida is kind of a foundational uh, part of this climate collaboratory. So thank you for joining us. So awesome. yeah, thank you, Jennison. Uh, let me read your your uh, oh. bi bio, um, and then we can bring you in. Jennison Kip Searcy is a resource economist with the University of Florida's program for resource efficient communities. She spe specializes in energy and water efficiency in Florida's residential built environment. Jennison also coordinates the statewide Sustainable Floridians Conversation in Action program, which is being adapted as an intergenerational program for schools and communities. Welcome to the Welcome to We show, Jennison Kip Searcy. Thank you so much. And, and I wanna thank all of the panelists and especially you, Sue, for being the connector for all of this, um, you know, all of this work and bringing together all these amazing people. So I, I feel honored to be a part of the panel. And I'm gonna just real briefly introduce the work that we're doing at, this, at the University of Florida through the Sustainable Floridians program. And, um, partnering with the communities around Florida, but also trying to um, actually working on expanding this program nationally. So the program started almost 10 years ago. So we're coming up on a 10 year anniversary and it's the University of Florida Extension. We act as the outreach arm of the university. So we have lots of educators and researchers. And then in all 67 counties in Florida, we have extension offices with faculty who are parts of those communities. They're on the ground at the grassroots and they understand you know, what these real um, urgent and uh, most salient sustainability issues are at the local level. And of course, in Florida, we're at the front lines of climate change and sea level rise. Um, a lot of communities are coming together to work on building their climate action plans and trying to adapt and mitigate at the same time. For resilience and part of what we were doing through sustainable floridians is trying to build up that network of literacy around sustainability issues among citizens and through a discussion to action format where we we go out and teach the science but enable groups of citizens to co-learn together they co-teach co-learn and share ways that they as individuals and as communities can take action on sustainability issues. 
And so the program is a very systems level program that looks at all the connections between different issue areas. And we cover issues. We begin with why you should care and really un, you know, having an introspective um, look by the participants sharing what sustainability means to them and thinking about how where they are in their personal lives where there are opportunities to make change we cover consumerism we cover water energy food systems climate change um, florida friendly landscaping which we you know take to a higher level of trying to um, really think about reducing our footprints our ecological footprints uh, transportation, land use. So we cover this whole range of, you know, topical areas and discuss the interactions among them. And probably the most important as it relates to the climate collaboratory and the conversations that we're working on with Sue and others, other community partners, the program closes with a community leadership and engagement module. So the citizens they meet for um, typically, a typical program runs six to eight weeks. The groups meet once a week for almost three hours. So there's a you know, short introduction to the fundamentals of each topic. And then the discussion component enables them to share perspectives and views and learn from one another. This last module about community leadership and, and engagement is when they really get an opportunity to identify concrete uh, mechanisms to put their action plans into action. And then they leave feeling a sense of agency you know, improved awareness about how the different sustainability and climate issues relate to one another. Um, and they feel empowered and capable and inspired to go out and make change. Um, and so these issues, as you all know, can be very overwhelming, but we can all play a very important role in addressing them locally so that we're enacting change at a global level as well. Uh, so that's what Sustainable Floridians is all about. We're working on expanding it um, through other universities in the Midwest. We're starting trying to go national uh, using the sustainable development goals as a framework for introducing topical areas and then bringing it down local to the tangible and very local issues um, that citizens can relate to and act on. So. That's my quick intro to Sustainable Floridians and how it relates to the Climate Collaboratory. <laughs> great, it sounds, it sounds wonderful and a, a great con, uh, a addition to the Collaboratory, as you were saying. Uh, shall we bring in our next guest? Are you able to? Um, yes, I am. Her intro, yeah, great. I'm, I'm trying to do everything behind the scenes right now. So that's so why. I'll, I'll, I'll bring her in. That's fine. Um, Lynn Cherry is producer director of the Young Voices for the Planet film series and author and illustrator of 30 award-winning children's books, including bestsellers, The Great Kapok Tree and A River Ran Wild. She lectures on climate change messaging and environmental education. And please welcome, let's welcome Lynn Cherry to the Welcome to We Show. Thank you, Lynn. Hi. So um, yes, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be part of this collaborative. Thanks, Sue, for inviting me. Um, I'll just do a little show and tell first, okay? So this is the cover, or not the cover, this is an illustration from The Great K-Pop Tree, one of my children's books. And here's another one from uh, How the Groundhog's Garden Grew. And then what I've been working on for the last 10 years is um, this project, The uh, Young Voices for the Planet. And these are a series of films, very short, between four minutes and 10 minutes, Youth Solutions to the Climate Crisis. And it started when I, as a children's book author and illustrator, I have um, have 30 books and going around speaking to kids in schools. And I found that when I would just tell them problems, you could actually see them just kind of curl up and push it away. And then I realized that's what was happening with climate change, that people were so troubled 
by what they heard that they just kind of pushed it away and I think went into denial. And I actually think that's why for 10 years we have not had as much success as we, we, we could have had, had we understood what's called motivated avoidance, how people are motivated to avoid hearing about something that they see as so troubling, so intractable, they just push it away and they shut down. And so um, realizing that t speaking to kids about the rainforest or rivers, you know, if I just told about the problem, they'd be upset. If I told them about solutions, they'd get all inspired and they'd want to do something. So that's how this Young Voices for the Planet project started, where I started just making these films, never having made films before, but producing these films about kids who were reducing CO2 emissions, like in big ways. Like, um, for instance, uh, this kid, Felix Finkbeiner, he's right here, he's from Germany. He's planted a billion trees. He learned that trees sequester carbon. Um, these girls here are from Florida, and they, uh, they, they had a program called Dream and Green that came to their school. And they found that of all the coastal cities in the world, Miami would suffer the greatest economic loss from climate change, from sea level rise. So they did an energy audit. They saved their school $53,000 in energy bills. Yeah. And that's been shown around Florida. Uh, Felix, um, and this is uh, not Felix, there's Milo here. Milo Cress. He started this, the straw, Stop the Plastic Straw campaign when he was nine, and that's become international. I won't go through all of them, um, but Jasa, this is a, this, a girl here, words have power. She had terrible asthma when she was six, uh, as did her friends. She started speaking at rallies. She spoke at city council, and they were able to get the coal fire power plant that was the cause of her asthma shutdown. And she's gonna be speaking this weekend. We're, um, we're speaking, we're doing a workshop at the Drawdown Conference, Drawdown Learn in Rhinebeck, New York, which is based on the book Drawdown. And for anyone who's not familiar with that, it's a must read, it's a hundred ways that you can draw down carbon out of the atmosphere using agricultural practices, trees, rainforests, you know, all these, a lot of nature, you know, things that are just sort of uh, no brainers. And then this film here, uh, these girls here, um, they were, um, there was a law in their town that prohibited solar panels on town buildings. They were nine years old. They saw the Young Voices for the Planet films. They thought, those kids look just like me. Maybe we could, maybe if they could do that, maybe I could do something. They went and they testified at town meeting. They got a standing ovation. The law was overturned. And then the town went and put solar panels on every public building. And then on the school. And then the kids lobbied to get a solar array at the town landfill. And they lobbied to get sustainability like as a, a value in their town. And then there was a, a piece of woods that was gonna be sold and they advocated to save that and they saved it. So then it's called self-efficacy, the belief in your ability to make a difference in the world. And once this self-efficacy is developed, then there's no stopping young people. But I think that um, for us, um, we're all adults here. <laughs> and for us, I think um, to, they have, there's all this amazing energy and you know, there's marching in the streets. And um, one of the young, the young people who's going to be on that panel at, in Rhinebeck at, at Drawdown, um, her, her name is Isabel Breslin, that people call her Scout. And she, was, she participated in the United Nations Youth Summit. And they have a, um, a Kids for Nature uh, pro uh, project and they're going around to towns and they're, they're showing towns how they can become more sustainable through sequestra sequestration of, ca of carbon through natural systems. So it's pretty exciting. And I think um, one, I guess one of the projects we're working on now is uh, the Civic Engagement and Democracy Workshops. We got a, a $90,000 grant from the Heinz Endowments to put these on. And we've done four in Pittsburgh. And then on Thursday, I'll be speaking at the Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Council for the Social Studies Annual Conference. Um, we're actually getting their President's Award for the Young Voices for the Planet films. And we'll be introducing these, um, this Young Voices for the Planet Civic Engagement and Democracy Workshop 
our goal is to try and get these into schools and um, um, sort of what I think a lot of us have been you know thinking is like to systematize this you know so it's it's uh, not just you know piecemeal and so the um, I'm in New Paul's um, New York now I'm the visiting scholar at SUNY New Paul's SUNY State University of New York and the teacher resource center has taken um, a web the webinar from that's made from these these uh, civic engagement workshops that we did in Pittsburgh and they're breaking them up into pieces they're taking our curriculum which is also available on our website which is youngvoicesfortheplanet.com and they're making modules which will be sent out to schools throughout New York and that's something that we could do in the Midwest, we could do in Florida, um, especially the films where they, they're like Dreaming Green, where there is a really strong geographical connection to um, the area that we might be focusing on. So I'll stop there and um, that's a lot. <laughs> but thanks again for, for um, including me in this discussion. Yeah, this is That's so great to have everybody kind of here together. And I would love to bring in Dave Room, who fashions himself a shift shaper, as all of his work is to create pathways for collective shifts in consciousness. Room co-authored Pacha's Pajamas, a story written by nature. He develops edutainment and interactivities to uplift children worldwide. And he's also joined by Ala in Henson. Uh, e. Henson is the art director at Patches Pajamas. His first animated short film won an award at the AIGA World Studio Scholarship Program. He produced music videos honoring music legends like Michael Jackson, Tupac Shakur, which became YouTube sensations. He animates for games and films. Welcome both. Thank you. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you all for putting this together. It's uh, really great to be among a group of people who are working for the we, as opposed to the me. and people who understand that we need to make big changes in how we uh, live on the planet, how we behave on the planet, and that we can't do those in isolation. We obviously can do things in our own lives, but we need to connect those all together and create a, a wave of change that's going to lift all the boats. So I, I guess I'll, I'll jump in initially and then um, I guess Ala, if you you wanna you wanna jump in, or how do you all want to handle this? Should I do one statement and then Ala? Sure. Should we? Okay. So, Pacha's pajamas. Pacha is a little girl with big dreams. When Pacha goes to sleep, the plants and animals on her pajamas become her guides on a dream adventure to learn more about herself and her connection to the natural world. We're seeing Pacha as a, Pacha's Pajamas as a youth engagement platform. There's a number of different components. So there's the, there's the book. There's also a, a soundtrack to the book that features Mos Def, Talib Kweli, and Cheech Marin, among many other artists. We, we also have pajamas. So there's real life pajamas that kids can get that have plants and animals, animals on them and they can have their own dreams about, about going, to the, going to, to the jungle, about being in nature, about um, being with, with, with animals. And um, I think I'll tell you a little bit about Pacha's story. So one day Pacha is coming home from school and her She's having an asthma attack. Her father and her mother console her. Her mother gives her a pair of pajamas. The pajamas have plants and animals on them. When she goes to sleep, she ends up going into a dream in the jungle. And the first thing she sees is this whale that's, that's actually drowning. 
Imagine that, a whale drowning, right? Well, as it turns out, the whale has a plastic bag stuck in his blowhole and a little hummingbird comes out of nowhere and, and pulls that, that plastic bag out of the whale's blowhole. Pacha sees this and she's amazed. She ends up joining those, those animals and several other ones. They decide that they need to throw a nature festival for all the planets, all the plants and animals in the world. In fact, everybody's invited except for humans. And you might say, well, Pacha's a human, right? Well, actually, Pacha is disguised as a little gorilla. So she's working along with, with all these other animals, the, the whale, the jaguar, the, the mushroom, the tree, the pebble, uh, all of these different plants, animals, and pebbles that are, are working together to create the greatest festival on earth. And the idea is to bring together everybody, bring everyone together, just like we're talking about the we to me, right? The me to we, right? Uh, bring everybody together to talk about what's going on and see what can be done. And they thought, well, the best way to do something like that is with a festival, with music. But in addition to the music aspect, there are action teams that are meeting on specific subjects. So there's the, the oyster mushrooms are meeting with the sea otters and the whales to help think about what can be done to, to um, stop oil spills and to mitigate them when they happen. And there's the, the poison oak and the old growth redwood trees and other forest animals that are getting together to protect the forest. So we've got all these action teams looking at how they can solve the, the pressing problems of, of what's going on in their homes. And that's what this, this initial story is about. Uh, we have, like I said, several different components. One of the, the key design components that we had was to use augmented reality to bring the books to life. So a kid can put a app over the illustrations in the book and they, they appear to come off to life. They, the characters appear to jump off the page and start singing and dancing. Um, that's because Allah is a master illustrator and animator. That's all his work. But um, we've found that including the augmented reality into a book makes it magnetic for kids. They just want to see it. I mean, they're, they're, they're on these phones all the time, right? So we said, how can we give them something that's actually nutritious, that's gonna support them thinking about things that they wouldn't otherwise think about, that's gonna support them in um, having conversations with other kids and with their parents and with, with uh, their teachers at school about these pressing issues that we're dealing with. We decided to put uh, climate change on the through, the through line of the Pacha's Pajamas story in the first book. Um, Pacha, so Pacha goes on this dream adventure and halfway through the dream adventure, this huge storm hits the festival and actually shuts everything down. And we don't actually directly say, oh, this is climate change. But this is meant to open the door to a conversation about climate change and about its impacts on, on, our, on our life. So we've um, included a ton of different issues in it. It's not just climate change, but there's, uh, there's drought, there's um, plastic in the ocean, as I mentioned earlier. There's, just, there's a whole spectrum of environmental issues. And, this book in the augmented reality is seen as really a doorway for us to, to get these conversations on the minds of kids who might not otherwise be thinking about them. Wow, that's, that's so, so wonderful. And you know, I'm so excited that you're, you're bringing out the idea of um, moving towards an expanded way of thinking about we, and that's kind of embedded in, in your 
in the whole concept of Pacha and Pacha's pajamas. If, if you go to we.net, you'll see that the rotating pictures at the top of the, the page are not just uh, all the, the interesting types of people in the, in the world, right? But next to the word we, you, you also see dolphins and lions and <laughs> nice. forests and, and ecosystems and rivers and mountains. So it's, it's kind of an expanded concept of we. So just wanted to point that out and thank you for, for that. Shall we bring in Ala and, and tell us about how the illustrations are, are working and, and your work in general? So I'm gonna start off by saying the earth is a garden <laughs> <He's so> <laughs> <laughs> and it's time to cultivate it because we, we, we must be the cure and to bring healing on this planet. And um, Pacha, Pacha's pajamas is our attempt to um, magnetize the inspiration of what's going to transpire with all of us. And one of our um, profound messages of Pacha's pajamas is that we are all connected, which is the line in the back of the book. So it's, it's very um, <laughs> synchronic and serendipitous that mm -hmm. us are getting together, mm -hmm. we are getting together. And the way this book started, or this, this movement has started with Pacha's Pajamas is um, 2014, there was a, a 13 indigenous grandmother water ceremony. And this is before I met David Benjamin, but we were all sitting in a circle and everyone said what they're grateful for. And David um, and his business partner at the time had sung a song called We Are All Connected. And I was next, but after everything was done, I thanked them for sharing that. And I asked them, what do they do? Because they mentioned Pacha's pajamas. And then he introduced the concept to me and then showed me an image of Pacha at the time. And I'm like, bro, your idea and concept is phenomenal. But with Pacha looking like that, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to go nowhere. And they kind of laughed at me and and I kind of, we all just laughed. And then um, I was working on a project similar. It was a, a female character and she was into meditation and getting people uh, more mindful. And I was like, I just finished this project. I want you to contact me once, once you feel the time is right. And soon him and his business partner contacted me and we met up at a local coffee place and we sat down and had a good rapport and it was like so let's see your portfolio I showed them some drawings of some characters I've done and David was like I want Pacha to look just like that like the style he just stood up and it kind of was it literally was his, history after that because we was going back and forth with fleshing Pacha out and I want her to have more hair I want her to, to PJs to be looking blah 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 and then next you know it started getting more solidified and pop just started being on a roll and next you know we started designing her in 3d and then um basically when she was in 3d i had more capabilities like we started making her brother and we started making animals next you know i went from thinking it was just going to be a contracted job and then end up wanting to do full time and so i just started on my own time, just designing characters, making the jaguar and making the mushroom. And next, you know, I have a whole universe of Pacha and, and her brother and her family, and I got animals. So we just waiting for the right resources to come through so we can just start building upon it as like a whole healing movement of, of like David said, of nutritious children entertainment. Because we want people to be engaged, but also getting something enriching out of it. Because as I grew older, I started realizing that the shows on television 
just didn't teach anymore like it's it just was mindlessly getting people um caught up like i remember as a child i used to get some form of wisdom from some cartoons and nowadays they don't have that level of enlightenment that i i like in in my um children entertainment plus we just have to reach the future and by doing so we have to come together and and heal the planet and have better um cartoons and better uh nutritious edutainment if you will for them to to be able to um grasp yeah enough about me no <laughs> no, no it, it, that's great and i'm so glad that you connected with the 13 indigenous grandmothers oh we, thank you yeah we the world has actually worked with them and if you go to we.net it's their picture that you see that's the first picture you see on the on the top of the page is them wow and our, our dear friend uh, carol hart you may know about this she she was a film uh filmmaker and she did a a, a brilliant film called for the next seven generations and it was a documentary about the 13 indigenous grandmothers and she has had uh, unfortunately she's not with us anymore but she, you know she was one of the people that helped to launch sesame street and wow and we worked with her and created a program called an urgent message from your children which is uh something if you don't know about it it might be interesting to see it's a, it's actually a video series of videos created by and featuring children who are 12 years old and younger. And the invitation video actually has uh, a child who's five years old in, in the video. So if you go to weyourchildren.org, you'll see that. And Carol Hart um, was uh, one of the, the producers of, of that uh, project along with uh, me and uh, an er a guy named Eric Davis for We The World. So. Anyway, thank thank you for that. And Sue, would you like to lead us in a kind of a roundtable discussion about the collaboratory and all the different possibilities from sure. now through 2050? Your your 103rd birthday. <laughs> we've we've got some work to do on the road to 2020, 2030, 2050, and beyond. And we have one more climate collaborator uh, with Jenison this afternoon and I wonder if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little about what you bring. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. All right. Wonderful. Yeah, I was just turning to my friend Jennifer Taylor um, saying we'd like to introduce you because you're part of this climate collaboratory in so many ways. So I'll, I'll let and Jennifer is going to be very um, what's the word? not boastful. There's a word for that. And I can't. <laughs> yes. Modest. 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 Thank you. Self effacing. I've been in a long conference. Yeah, modest, but she re recently received the um, Organic Pioneers Award from the Rodale Institute, um, which is quite an honor. Mm. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about herself. Hi, everyone. It's such an honor to. To, to be a part of your conversation today. Thank you so much, Jennison, and thank you all as well. Um, I'm Jennifer Taylor, and um, my work is focused on uh, building capacity, working with small farmers, farm workers, farming populations, uh, and equipping them toward a thriving, what we call a thriving sustainable development. So it's a participatory kind of research and education um, opportunities and learning experiences. Um, and uh, I'm new to your conversation and I just thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for being here. It's, um, I understand you all are at a uh, conference uh, in Atlanta, that is, I believe it's with uh, extension agents from all over the country. Is that correct? 
team called the, the National Sustainability Synergy Squad. And so we're trying to kind of connect the dots with all of these amazing resources out there and accelerate this work um, and, you know, improve what Extension has to offer to communities on the ground and also listen and connect. And so um, Jennifer herself is a farmer, mm -hmm. sort of a grower and um, works with Extension also at mm -hmm. Florida A&M University. So she's on the ground in Florida as well. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> and thank you. And I, I understand that uh, Florida A&M is uh, working with the uh, Hurricane Michael recovery. And, That's true. And so I, I know that uh, we have had conversations. I know about the same time that Hurricane Michael did such devastation in the panhandle part of Florida. Karen out in California was dealing with the wildfires. And so in our conversation, uh, we were thinking that, um, you know, if we could find a way to coordinate what's going on in her part of the country and my car part of the country um, to identify uh, what essentially are, are the effects of climate change in the way that I look at it, that um, we can put together a program that can develop in different communities in different ways. So that's really what we're looking at with the Climate Collaboratory is finding a, a way to get something started. I, it's, I feel like we have the, uh, the kindling for starting this fire that's going to be uh, taking off very quickly and that not, not the kind of wildfire that uh, California suffered, but rather a, a spiritual enlightenment type fire that will be bringing the peoples of the world together so that we can deal with these issues in a way that uh, is more mature perhaps than what we're doing now. And um, yeah, so I wanted to add that when I, I, like Allah, when I first saw Pacha's pajamas, I just fell in love. And I wanted to, I told Dave right away, I, I just see her as being the, uh, you know, the, the guiding light on this, on this path that we're now doing, we're calling the road to 2020 and beyond. And um, so what I've done is, well, let me, Dave told about the, um, uh, the nature festival. There's a big stadium where a lot of music and wonderful things happen. There's the biome stages that he described where different problem solving is going on. And pretty much the humans were not part of that story at all, except for Pacha with her mask. <laughs> And then the mask comes off and she says, but I'm a child of nature just like you. And so what I saw with that is, so the rest of the story, we've got the past, we've got the present, it's time to tell the story of what happens in the future so that um, we can, and, and this is our job, I figure that we the humans are the only ones who can tell this story about how we came together to deal with the problems that are, are challenging everyone on the planet and, and everything on the planet, the whole system of life, the balance of nature. And so um, I've been working for several years now on a sequel to Pacha's Pajamas. And uh, right now it, it's a trilogy. We have Road to 2020 is getting everybody into teams uh, and ready to play the sustainable world game starting in January of 2020. And this by golly is gonna be real, even if it's super simple, we're gonna be playing some sustainable world games starting in January. And um, because that's uh, Martin Luther King week in, in our part of, uh, in Gainesville, we have a, a uh, Martin Luther King week. And we want to be using that 
opportunity to take some of the quotations uh, that Dr. King gave us. The one I love is about the World House. Uh, it was from his Nobel Peace Prize uh, lecture. And um, so we're using that as kind of the kickoff for this whole thing, that it's really so much more than just taking care of the science and the technology. It's it's taking care of the people and changing hearts and coming together and learning to live as a global society and having a, a civilization that can work in harmony with nature. So January, each month we have a little different theme. There's going to be some interfaith work that's really meaningful to me. Uh, coming into March, we have um, Earth Month starting on the spring uh Equinox, equinox. <laughs> pardon? Yes, the the equinox, equinox. which which yes. was it was yeah. the actually the original Earth Day, as proposed by John McConnell, who helped to launch Earth Day in 1970, and he said, "Oh, let's put it on the equinox on the change of the seasons," but it didn't really get worked out until April 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> they they couldn't really go live on. On the equinox but and it worked out for april 22nd but we want to symbolize and immortalize that as and we call it earth month from earth month from and, the and we and we here in california are doing a monthly show called the miss kindness global neighborhood it's it's a spin-off of mr rogers and it's going to be um in syn synchronized with what sue's talking about so we have earth month and we have um golden rule month and we have global love month and we have um peace month and so each month i'm going to be doing um a, a live show on um our community television station and um and so this is all going to be synchronized and we're going to introduce pacha on on that show and the um, We Are All Connected dance. Um, Miss Kindness is going to learn the We Are All Connected dance. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to also mention that a, a big part for me as an elder um, is working with um, Elders Climate Action. And we've recently started a Florida chapter and it is that group that is sponsoring with We the World, the pilot project in Alachua County, Florida, which is where Jenison and I live. And um, we will be going into schools and through the communities in our county and bringing in resources like the Young Voices for the Planet and Pacha's Pajamas and helping to bring them to life in different ways in our own community. And in so doing, we make it available anywhere that we can uh, put together a little program that will allow people to um, feed into this collaborative storytelling. And I wanna just show you, and I was gonna ask if somebody could please take a, a screenshot of this, uh, Welcome to We Printer Net Gazette. <laughs> and this is a collaborative publication that is for part of a global network, working with some people in Africa who are planting trees like crazy. And so we're gonna be uh, joining with, um, well, both Pacha and, and Lynn Cherry's Young Voices for the Planet. She mentioned Felix, who has already planted a billion trees he's going for. A trillion. And so we also have Pacha, who has a, a um, cute little video. Thank you, Allah. Uh, wonderful video that says, um, uh, our earth, it's changing. We must give back to the planet and we can plant a billion trees. So now we're going to take it on even more and uh, make it a trillion so that we can really start pulling down the uh, reversing global warming. And we're also pulling everything together in the gardens of global unity. So we let, we'd like to feature all of these products on our page for the gardens of global unity. And we'd like to um, work together to really expand the products that you have. I also design musical coloring books and we have the coloring book that we designed, Rick and Sue and I designed together that is the 11 gardens of global unity. And it is 
um, uniting the elders with the youth for the love of our planet. And we would love to collaborate with all of you on all of these wonderful projects and all of these wonderful products. Um, I, I think it would be so much fun to create a musical coloring book for all of your products that you have. I think it would be a lot of fun to work together and, and really expand this. The, the series that we're working on is for the sustainable development goals. So this is, um, so that's what we're hoping to work to really bring this to the children. Um, I live in a, a little town called Solvang in California and we've been bringing pilot programs to our local schools. And I would love to, you know, really bring all the work that you've been doing here to our community so that we can um, really expand the work that you've already done and, you know, kind of piggyback on what you already have. And I'd love to feature all of you on my show too. So I'm excited to um, have you. It's gonna be a global neighborhood so people can come in through all over the world through Picture Picture and they're, they're gonna be able to pop in as, as our global neighbors. And I think it's just gonna be a really beautiful expansion of what Mr. Rogers did for many of us, my, my generation. Yeah, the, uh, that means the earth is like a, an expanded neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would love to hear from Lynn about um, the, uh, your, your reaction, Lynn, to uh, what's been happening recently with the youth uh, leading all of these climate actions that we saw in September. And then there's a lot following up. I mean, there are all these different things going on. There's the Sunrise Movement, mm -hmm. there's Extinction Rebellion, uh, Greta, uh, actually sh the way she says, says her name is Greta Thunberg. That's, that's mm -hmm. my understanding of how she pronounces her name. And, sh uh, and all, all of these things, um, you know, it's really putting young people in front and center in everyone's consciousness and, and breaking through to the uh, the major media that that uh, we've all been kind of looking to do for all these years. What do you think about that, Lynn? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's um it's kind it's been kind of mysterious to me because um, so many of us have been working with young people. You know, the, the Young Voices for the Planet films have been going into schools and film festivals for ten years now, and um, there have been young people who have developed self-efficacy and who have been working in their communities, kind of on a small scale. And, you know, you kind of just wonder, like, what's the tipping point when, you know, enough people have been, been um, enough young people have been exposed to these, val this, these, this value system, you know, this idea that they ha do have power. And then, um, I, th I mean, there's a lot of things in history where um, it seems like it happened overnight, like the falling of the Berlin Wall or, um, I mean, you can just name a whole bunch of things, but um, it was like creating the prepared mind. It was like years and years of other of people working behind the scenes and getting these ideas out there and, and um, showing examples. And so, um, you know, we'll never know how much our work has, you know, how, how our work has helped this, this, um, this whole um, action. But we, we know that for instance, the, the Parkland kids, and uh, I'd say that they're really the, the first spark because I know Greta was, that's what got Greta going out sitting in front of the, the Swedish parliament was she saw the Parkland kids. Well, the Parkland kids were introduced to civic engagement education in their school. And that was in, in, in the count, same county that, the, that Dreaming in Green, that group I mentioned to you, had their energy audit programs and we're showing the Young Voices for the Planet films. Now, I haven't heard from any of the kids saying, oh yeah, we saw that. But the fact is that these teachers there were introducing them to the whole concept that they did have power, that their voices mattered. And so I think that that's really, really important. Yes, there are millions of kids worldwide who are going out and demonstrating, but I think what we can do is that we can deepen this by um, actually, you know, grounding it in histor historical context, you know, women's, the women's getting the right to vote, 
civil rights, kids, um, uh, so they were not you know, allowed to work in sweat houses. They had to have an education. And all these, we can go on and on about, but it was all these people, it was huge amounts of people getting together that actually made these change changes. And so I think that's so important to see that this isn't just isolated, but this is a tradition of young people speaking out and that they do have power when they speak out in a unified way and that they have a real focus. And so um, one of the things I, um, I was really excited about what Jenison's doing where she's working with the schools and the curriculum into the schools and that's what we're doing in New York State where this civic engagement and democracy education is just embedded into the curriculum through the standards, you know, which is actually saying that you have to have um, in the standards, you have to teach social studies now, you know, you have to teach um, agency, you know, and self-efficacy. These are things that everyone is now scrambling for now that they see what it really means on the ground, right? So I think that um, that's part of our job is to get this institutionalized, systematized in every school, in every school, and then it'll be a wave, then it'll be then it will be the whole the whole world and we will will make mass change. And there's powerful influences out there. Uh -oh. Uh, we're um, losing, uh, maybe the signal is, is dropping off a little. I'd like to just add that. Uh, so um, that's, those are my thoughts on that. And, um, and I'm really excited about us all working together and, and um, working together to get all of these these resources, they're wonderful resources um, into education system. Yeah, I think that that's really brilliant to see how things have interconnected. One thing has sparked another thing, which has sparked another thing. Uh, the I think the, the lawsuit that our children's trust mm. oh, uh, yeah. was involved with uh, and uh, the Earth Guardians with Shetezkat mm -hmm. and yeah. um, we, we interviewed um, someone named Aji Piper from the, the Earth Guardians for the yeah. 11 Days of Global Unity Tell Summit a, a couple of years ago uh, on that, that lawsuit. So that, that also um, ha helped to add to, to the mix. And Sue, you wanted to add something yourself. Yes, I know that Lynn was involved in uh, both the Washington DC and the New York climate action, youth climate action uh, happenings recently. Maybe you could tell us a little about that. Um, well, I just attended. I actually didn't, you know, I, I wasn't um, a speaker or anything. I just was right. like a fly on the wall. That's what I try to be. I try to be a fly on the wall, you know, with these documentaries there. It's really um, just giving the children, um, you know, to amplify their voices. That's, that's been my mission and try and kind of stay off to the sidelines myself. But, you know, you mentioned our children's trust. And the first young person who I filmed was this, was Alec Lors, L-O-O-R-Z. And he, <laughs> st he started a group called Kids Versus Global Warming. And when, right. he, when he was 12, I gave him this book. Um, it was by Jane Langdon, and it was called The uh, Children's March or something. Jane Langdon, oh, the fragile flag. It was called the fragile flag. And in, I said to him, you know, here, look at this. this these kids, this, you got this huge march. All the kids march on Washington. And so then he started I Matter. And he started these I Matter marches. And he organized these marches all over, you know, they were Boulder, Colorado. They were all over the, the country. That's right. And he he was, and, and then he, he actually, uh, you know, the, he met with the, our children's trust lawyers. They had this idea to bring a lawsuit, but it was Alec when he was 12 or 13 who said, you should let us testify for ourselves. And it was like, oh, you know, that was his idea. And so he and the kids started testifying and that's the power of that suit. Is this not the lawyers arguing for it so much as it is the young people getting up and, and making the case for themselves. So Alec, was he was a ground zero for our for that for our children's trust and for these marches and for 
Um, he, he influenced Chetescott. I have a movie that I made when Chetescott was, I think, uh, eight. So I filmed him when he was 10. And when he was eight, he was just looking up to Alec Lourdes. He said, you know, he was his hero. He was, you know, he was developing, he said, Alec Lourdes, you know, he's out there and he's doing these marches. And so we're organizing a march here in Boulder. And, and he, he was 10 years old and he's organizing a march because he saw Alec. So this is actually called something called, this is called social modeling. And um, these are, this is, this, this, all these films and all these stories we're telling, they exemplify 70 years of research by Dr. Albert Bandura. He's at Stanford University. He wrote, he coined the term self-efficacy. He coined the term social modeling. And he basically took us from Freudian psychology, which was, you know, all this made up stuff, to psychology that was based on, on research and evidence that, and then we see, well, what makes kids want to do something? Their peers. It's, they are more influenced by their peers than anything else. So enough of these young people speaking out and other young people seeing them, that's going to motivate pe those, those young people much more than me going into talk or, the, or, or any of us. And so that's why this project was focusing on the young voices for the planet and getting those young voices out to other young voices and having mm -hmm. the young people just be the ones who led this charge. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. And just so you know, uh, Alec Lures was one of the first people to make a video for the WE campaign. Oh. Um, and he, um, one of our board members named Marriott Sheldon, uh, is a good friend of his mother, I forget her name, but um, Victoria, Victoria, right? And and um, so we set it up, uh, and this was right when we were launching We.net and the, and the whole We campaign about 10, 10 years ago. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was so great to see all the th things that he did, and um, that was right around when Bill McKibben also made a video about uh, for the We campaign, saying you know why We and why now, and of course his focus was was climate change. Mm -hmm. I introduced um, Alec to Bill McKibben and to, um, and to James Hansen. And we went to Columbia to film Jim, Jim Hansen. Actually, it was uh, NASA up, up on the Columbia campus. Uh -huh. And I have this wonderful video. It's, it's actually online where Alec asks, so if there's anything we can do for, to do something about climate change, what, should, what, what could we do? In, Hanson says, we have to put a price on carbon. No, we have to make it so expensive that you want to keep it in the ground. Right. Really, really Very nice. Awesome. So, awesome. you know, as, as we're winding up, why don't we just go around and see, uh, answer that wonderful question that Karen and I love to ask, what can we do together that we can't do on our own? And maybe specifically say how people can connect with you, you know, web websites and other ways so that we can start to expand how how we are all collaborating in this col this climate collaboratory that that Sue has initiated. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been sharing the Pacha um, video uh, with um, on my website and with uh, kids. I, I, I love it. It's just I think it's really beautiful. So I think by you know, social media as much as we can, sharing um, what we all are doing. And it's, it looks like um, many of us are going into schools, working with school boards, working with um, resources centers. Maybe we need to be more mindful about um, really thinking about, okay, well, what is it that we're gonna be presenting them with and, and maybe having more of a package you know, where I'm not just showing the young voices of the planet films, I'm saying, well, here's also this nice, really character, you know, and dance and integrating dance and, and mindfulness and, and uh, meditation, um, which I, I, I really love. So I think we, we can uh, maybe weave them together more. And what is your website? How can people connect with you uh -huh. to get involved? Um, our website, and it's, it's, there's a lot on it, is um, youngvoicesfortheplanet.com. And you go to our films and you can watch, there's 13 films there and they're, every one of them is a success story of kids and they'll make you cry. 
they'll make you cry, but they make kids feel like, oh, well, I got to do something. And there's a, our civic engagement and democracy curriculum on it. There's an action plan, which is, has just been incredibly popular. It's so simple. It's just an acronym, A-C-T-I-O-N, and you assess and analyze what you want to do. You figure out who to collaborate with. The T is timetable. I is identify who can, um, you know, who are the people in power, who you need to get to. O is to organize and N is the news. So take a look at that. You can all use that. It's really very simple. Um, there's the, uh, the workshops. So if any, if um, this, this brochure is, is, on, is on the website and if anyone wants us to do a workshop or a mini workshop or a, a talk at a conference, um, we're available to do that. And there's uh, just a lot more on that website. Like uh, you, could, you could just spend a couple of days on it. <laughs> that yeah. sounds great. Uh, thank you. And um, Dave, uh, we haven't heard from you in a while. If you want to make any comments and, and then let people know how they can connect with you and support the work that you're doing. Okay. What can we do that we can't what can we do together that we can't do by ourselves? On our own, yeah. On our own. Well, we can do things that create a collective understanding, collective intelligence, and collective wisdom. We can't do anything collective by ourselves, almost by definition. I mean, by definition, but the, the powerful thing about doing things as a collective us coming to collective understandings and having collective actions is they have so much more impact than us doing things on our own. So I think it's really important that we do things on our own, but it's, it's, it's also important that we, we move from the, from the acting on our own to acting as a collective. And people want to find out about us, they can First of all, they can check out the book, Pacha's Pajamas, a story written by nature. It's on Amazon right now. You can also find it at pachaspajamas.com. And if anyone wants to reach me directly, they can send an email to dave at pachaspajamas.com. All right. And how about you, Ala? So what can we do together that we can't do on our own is raise funding for a project that's here to reach the hearts of the future. Um, I want to be able to create, but I can't just do it alone. I, I would like a whole team. I would like others' thoughts. Um, I would like um, voice actors. Um, it, it's a whole movement that that needs people, and not just me, because I want to be able to put my energy towards creating, and and not necessarily saying, <laughs> "Come support this." And I want to just be focused. And to do that, I need people who's uh, expertise is raising funds, is acting. So a, a whole, a whole universe. That's, yeah, that's what I feel. Yeah, that's like uh, it takes a village, basically. There you go. To raise Pacha takes a, vid a village. Ex exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so how? So yeah. you want to give? Uh, specifically how people can uh, connect with you and support your work? Uh, they could connect with me through oaklandartist at yahoo.com if you have ideas, advice. Um, uh, also through Pachas Pajamas. Um, D David and I are um, business partners as well as really good friends. So we're, we're all connected. Exactly. Isn't that what Pacha says? <laughs> she does, actually. <laughs> Which is so serendipitous that your company is called We, 
in uh, podcasts, like a catchphrase, we are all connected. So I don't, I don't think anything is happened stance at this point. I think we all, I like to call, uh, call this term uh, divine, divine serendipity. Divine serendipity. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Looks like we have a non-human who wants to be part of this conversation. I uh, know. Interrupted my line. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Everybody thank, thank you, Allah. Yes, thank you, thank you. Sure. Um, yep. Shall we go to Jenison next, and followed by Sue, Karen, and myself? Thank you. So I'll I'll try to keep this short, but. I think the power of storytelling is so wonderful and mm -hmm. hearing non human contribute to the conversation reminds me I, I wrote a story when I was in second or third grade about how God lived on the other side of the moon that we never see and that dogs barked at the moon because they were God's um, ambassadors reporting back to God and that's why dogs backwards is God and <laughs> wow. watching us through our dogs and <laughs> that's great. Yeah, it is. Should publish that. I love dogs. <laughs> Me too. There, there's something godlike about them. Yes. Huh? Oh Jennifer uh, Jennison, you're uh, it's breaking up a little bit, but um I don't know if you can move your Oops. Yeah, it's, uh, signal is, is dodgy. Yeah, I love this group. I, I, I grew up in a family. I'm sorry. Um, Hear you. Yeah, I think the signal uh, a little weird on on your end, Jenison. But I don't know if you can move uh, the position a little better. Bit. Uh, not yet. But um, what? Well, you know, we could come back to you. What? No, it's not not there yet. No. Something. Something, something okay. weird. Maybe we could mute and and let me just say that. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Sue. When I was uh, in uh, graduate school, I took a. Uh, anyway, I had a professor, whose husband was on the team with Jonas Salk, that got the polio vaccine through the schools. Boom! Just like that. And so I told her way back then, I want to do that too. <laughs> and so that's what I see with Jenison in her position with the Cooperative Extension and all of the resources of people who are doing wonderful things. What can we do together? Put together the story that tells how we came together to deal with these social and environmental problems so that they're manageable and we can deal with this mm -hmm. we are yep. family one earth community with a common destiny from the earth mm. church. there you go and you know i'm also thinking a lot uh, it might be good a good idea to aggregate the all these contacts we have that i could write a list of the different groups in you know new york state pennsylvania um some in florida um I say New York State, yeah, and um, Maryland, where um, I, I have connections with school systems. And I think that if we could put together just even a letter, you know, that goes out to school boards, school systems, and there's a, a group that's called uh, I remember, Schools for Climate Action. Are any of you familiar with that? No. Uh, yeah. And they take a look at it, it's schools, and the number four, climate action, they have a, a resolution that, that they have on their website and young people are bringing it 
to school boards and to, to school councils and asking that they sign it. And then once it's signed by the school board, then they bring it to their, their, their state legislators or their Congress people. And it's, ask, it's basically saying that climate change is um, child abuse and child neglect. And that um, the schools have a mandate to care for children and care and, and, and prepare them for their future. And that, that, that they are basically neglecting to do that by not addressing climate change and preparing them to live in a climate change world. Mm-hmm. So, um, so they've gotten huge numbers of school boards signing this. And they say, and, but one, it's one thing to say, okay, this is a climate emergency. It's no, another thing to then say, okay, now what are we going to do? And here's the actions that we're going to take to reduce CO2 in this town. And like the, um, like the girls in the movie Save Tomorrow where they're put solar panels on every town building or get electric buses. I mean, there's a million things you could be doing. And so um, I, w- I think that maybe to just try and um, put together um, our, a list of our, uh, you know, where we are, sort of like a temperature reading of, well, who are we, who are we in touch with? And, yep. and then build on that. And then who, do, who if, okay, that's who we're in touch with. And maybe, maybe asking all those people we're in touch with, okay, well, you know, um, like I'm speaking, I think I told you the, um, the Pennsylvania Council on Social Studies. So I, I, was ta- the, I was talking to the director of that and he said, oh, well, you know, yeah, I know this, uh, I know the, all these lawyers in New York. I know the bar, the head of the Bar Association. You know that they have a civic engagement program. Oh, well, you should meet them. So here's another completely different venue I hadn't even thought about. The lawyers, the Bar Association, they had a real vested interest in teaching civic engagement and government and, you know, and democracy education. So I think if we actually were, you know, put this down in a sort of orderly fashion about where these venues are, what are the pressure... <laughs> so yeah that well we're having a little bit of technical you know, difficulties okay. here but i think we get the point there mm-hmm. um yes and th- and sue this sounds like it could be uh part of the climate collaboratory to put this to compile all of these contacts and and resources um and in fact we could probably do that for all of the 11 themes, right, uh, that, uh, that we have with the uh, 11 Days of Global Unity and We the World. Um, and I just, be, before you go, Sue, um, uh, I mean, speak to um, Jenison. It seems like your signal is a little bit better. Did you change your location? Do you want to finish up saying how people can connect with you and support your work? Sure. So um, the best way to Next with me is not through a website, unfortunately, um, but you can email me directly at mjpip at ufl.edu. Um, we'll make sure we can share our contact info. Um, yes, can you say that again slowly and clearly? Sure. Your web, so your email. It's, um, my email address is m as in Mary, j as in Jenison, k i p p as in Peter, double p. M J Kip at ufl.edu, as in University of Florida. And that's the best way right at the moment to reach me. Um, I am in the process of working with a national team on planning for the 2021 National Sustainability Summit and National Extension Energy Summit, which is, um, I don't wanna give away the location completely, but uh, our team, our national team today is in the process of trying to connect all these dots, the system, you know, move towards systems thinking. And I, I get a lot of hope from my children because they are born natural systems thinkers and critical thinkers. And having that um, sense of empowerment and sense of agency and sense of e- efficacy you know, I see that in the youth. And so I'm really excited about being able to connect more with youth and hopefully in 2020 launch an intergenerational national scale sustainable Floridians program 
that we can collectively work on um, because a central goal is also trying to increase the reach of programs like this to underserved or underrepresented communities and voices that are often silenced or marginalized from those conversations at a local level. And I think academia, we, we when I say we academia, I think we need to and are doing a better job and hopefully will be doing a better job quickly of being very active listeners um, and taking that back to guide the the scholarly research and education in a way that uh, reflects the urgency that is required to address these issues. So um, I think I, I missed parts of the, the closing statements that everyone else made, but what I heard I'm definitely in line with. And I think if we can put together a concrete action plan for this collaborative, the Climate Collaboratory, um, and seek funding at a national scale to create essentially a public-private partnership um, that can accelerate the impacts and bring those voices of the youth, you know, elevate the voices of the youth and essentially connect all the ingredients, bring all the ingredients together quickly. And I've been using this analogy for the way systems thinkers operate and I'm a pie baker, so I keep this is the best analogy I can use. We've got all the ingredients. They're delicious, they're, but they're spread all over the globe. And we need, as bakers, to be able to use our collective skills and talents to put those together into a delicious pie and bake it and serve it to the world. And so um, it's those sort of intangibles that are gonna that turn those ingredients into something delicious that we can all share. And I think um, we need to have fun doing it um, so that we can sustain the sustainers, I often say. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think if we can really hone in on some deliverables within in 2020, looking ahead to 2050, um, and sort of formalize the partnerships um, and the roles that each of our respective Um, oh, the signal is dropping again. Yeah. Or groups can play and we... Yep. I think, I, I think we got you, the signal's dropping again, but it is a very tasty analogy that you make. So... <laughs> and and th thank you, Jen. Th thank you. I, I will stop there. Okay. Um, thank, the thank, thank, thank you, Jenison. And Sue, how can people get involved with and support the uh, Climate Collaboratory? Well, <clears throat> I'm, I'm in the uh, Garden of Environment at We the World. And uh, my address is Sue Blythe, B S U E B L Y T H E at uh, what is it? We the world.org. Yes, <laughs> I know that. Thank you. Yes. And, um, and Karen. Yeah, so um, it's exciting to think about what can we do together that we can't do on our own. Every day I ask that question and I think and I reach out to as many people as I possibly can. I've actually written a full musical called Kindness Changes Everything. It's a year long program that's um, already been implemented in my school here. So um, I'm working with the local music teachers, I'm working with the local teachers, and and um, I think that we could really do something incredible together. And um, I'm excited. Uh, you can follow me on all social media. I am Mindful Media Mom or Miss Kindness. And um, I use all social media and technology to raise the levels of gratitude, compassion, joy, love, kindness, and peace on earth. I help people who don't have a voice share their voice globally. So um, if you want to help, if you would like help with that at all, just reach out to me. Any one of you. Um, I have a wonderful network of beautiful, beautiful community that we call our global family. And um, you can 
email me directly at Karen Palmer at we the world.org. I am the lead organizer for the women. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, for the uh, women's campaign, we have 11 campaigns for change. You can see them all by going to we.net. Um, also, uh, th those 11 campaigns grew out of the 11 Days of Global Unity project and program that, uh, as Karen mentioned, or and Sue, um, this is our 15th year of doing that. And this past year, we had a tele-summit on each of the 11 campaigns for change. And of course, they include unity, interdependence, environment, economic justice, health, children and youth, women, human rights, freedom, disarmament and peace. So it's comprehensive. It's like a blueprint for global transformation. And you can see conversations on each of those areas um, by going, uh, you can get there by going to we.net or uh, and, and just click on the uh, 11 Days of Global Unity Telesummit. You can also get there by going to 11daysofglobalunity.org. Uh, 11 is a numeral and the rest are letters. And the children and youth, since we're talking about children and youth, um, on the uh, children and youth uh, broadcast that we did, uh, not only do we have Heidi Little, um, who leads the children and youth campaign, uh, at, with the International Children's Month, but also we had Jamie Margolin, who was sitting with Greta Thunberg uh, in, uh, testifying uh, in front of Congress about the whole issue during the uh, climate uh, summit that, that was going on in the UN and everything. So Jamie, uh, we have an, had an in-depth interview with her uh, on that telesummit. So I guess, um, why don't we wind up with the, the quote that, that we uh, always like to say at the end of these broadcasts, uh, when we launched the, the WE campaign and WE.net, our keynote speaker was John, Jonathan Granoff uh, from the Global Security Institute and a 2014 Nobel Prize nominee. And he said, I hope that WE expands so much that there is no longer any them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye everybody. This is a W by the way, for we. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, um, can you turn that? Uh... You're the host. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> go, go to where it says live streaming live and click on that little arrow. Uh -huh. Boy, we got through that technology, didn't we? <laughs>